Right, so we're ready to start now, Daniel. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our third session in our uh, migration from CAS 360 to CAS, des or CAS Desktop to CAS 360 webinar series. This one is all about the migration process. My name is Warren, and I'll be taking you through the, this process with Daniel. Hello, Daniel. Hello, Warren. How are you? We're back again, third, third week in a row. Third week in a row. So obviously this is the third webinar in the series. We have got recordings for the first two webinars and uh, you can certainly go back and, and watch those on our YouTube channel. So webinar one focused all on the key benefits of CAS 360 and some really key features we covered in that one, Daniel, including the brand new director ID features that are in CAS 360. We also touched on the, you know, bulk processing and very quick processing of annual reviews and also just some really handy features like your uh, document deadline alerts and your company debt alerts. And in webinar two, Daniel, you were joined by Anne to talk about her journey from moving from CAS desktop to CAS 360. Yeah, and look, and that was a great client story where Anne went through um, her whole process of moving to CAS 360 and she was one of the first adopters of CAS 360. And um, while there's always a bit of hesitancy in making that first step and you know, moving across from something that you're really accustomed to and know really well to moving to a new platform can be a bit daunting. We also know that she did it with a great amount of success and that now they are enjoying many, many great efficiencies and benefits from moving from an old desktop-based product to a cloud-based product. So her story was a great one. And um, I know, Warren, that as a product manager, that's the stuff that you, um, that you love to hear. And um, that's why you do what you do. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's um, been a big journey for for everyone involved in the CAS 360 team. I was chatting to someone earlier and we actually started working on CAS 360 nearly four years before it actually went to market. Um, we spent a long time um, talking to CAS desktop clients and finding out some of the key things that they were doing actually outside of the product. So it wasn't so much as, you know, making a form 484 uh, a little bit faster. It was so much more about looking at the processes that are being done for the entire job, not just the preparation of the form and working out ways that we can help, whether it's email delivery, whether it's digital signing, whether it's document management integration or practice management integration, or even just automated tracking of the document deadline and making sure that you as a user um, uh, are aware of when that deadline is. It was a, a really important process that we went through over a number of years to really collect and analyze that information and build a system that helped complete the job. Uh, and that's really what CAS 360 exists for, to complete that work better than you've ever done it before. And look, and, and today we're, we're going into the last part of the process, which is, okay, we've spoken to you about the benefits. We've given you a great client story and Honestly, Anne Wright is one of you know, many hundreds of clients that have made the migration across who is really happy. And um, now we're moving into the great migration. And effectively, we're just going to have a good, frank conversation with you all about the process of moving from CAS Desktop to CAS 360. And if any of you are on our competitors' products, um, there's also a process that we can talk about there too, which we can happy to do. And then if there's anyone here who's using ASICS portal, we can briefly touch on that also, because the process of moving across, regardless of the platform that you are on, we can one, do really well, and two, we can take all the pain out of it for you. So today's a really good opportunity to have a great conversation. Um, and what we will also do is that during the session and while we're having this conversation, please do ask any questions in the Q&A. Um, I'm happy to moderate those and then ask Warren the questions because I probably won't be able to answer too many of them. Um, I will do my best, but I always get told off for saying the wrong things, so I'll leave that to Warren. So Warren, we'll start off with, I know, one of your favourite slides or quotes, and yeah. uh, we'll run from that. Yeah, so, I mean, one of the things that we were doing uh, when we were researching and, and building a case for CAS 360 was really speaking to a lot of firms about their process and, and the way that they, in which they were working. And what really came from that was this quote, and this quote's a you know, pretty famous one in software, that the pain to move can be more painful than the benefits of moving. Um, and this, this quote really stuck with me. It was a quote that you know, we kept um, sort of saying over and over to ourselves and to each other um, when we were going through a building a migration process. Um, we weren't in a position where we were just building a CAS 360 product. 
we were also in a position where we had to build a migration from the desktop product to the CAS 360 product. So effectively, we had to build two products. And the reason for that is this quote. Um, we needed to make sure that the pain of moving was not um, was 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 not much at all. We needed to make sure that the, there was no pain to move, that, that moving was seamless and simple. And it really was something that we as BGL could take away and do for you rather than you having to go through a painful process to transition. Um, a lot of the times when we were going to practices and showing them CAS 360, they loved what CAS 360 offered as a product. But the, where the fear, where the pain and where the worry was, was in the transitional process. They could see that the value that CAS 360 could bring, they just didn't know how painful it would be to get there. And, and you know, that's why we wanted to really focus on a simple migration that we could do for you. Um, and then we can have you up and running on CAS 360, making full use of the features that we have built through our simple migration process. And really, Warren, and I know that we've we discussed this quite often and we've seen some um, interesting plays over the last six weeks of software companies moving you know, from one provider of one platform to another and not carefully thinking out the migration process and really mitigating any of the risk or really mitigating any of the pain is a really important part of what we offer holistically. And the way that we've positioned the migration um, routine is something that you can take a great deal of confidence in and something that you don't need to worry yourself with because we will take care of that for you. And great software companies make migrations really easy. And I'm pleased to say that the work that the team has done to get the product to a point that migration becomes something which is just a natural step that you can easily step into and with confidence is something that we are all very, very proud of. Yeah, and I think that one thing we were really um, mindful of, Daniel, was preserving 30 years of CAS desktop data. Um, we were in a position where we have clients that have been on our desktop product for 20, 30 years. And that is a lot of, a lot of product, a lot of data, a lot of documents, and a lot of knowledge stored up in those systems. And we can't neglect that. We, we, we had to make sure that we were able to build a process that could preserve and transition that all of that data across um, so that no data is lost, so that every bit of data that you have is in CAS 360 now. It's not a case of here, are the, here is a list of compromises. When we built the migration, there were no compromises. Everything that you had in your CAS desktop came to CAS 360. And truly, Warren, it's a big deal because... I know that in, you know you hear of it happen all the time where people have to go back and reconstruct or re, re you know rebuild a, a transaction history or a share history or go back to a particular moment in time to find out which shareholders held a particular shareholding or group of shareholdings or which directors held a particular position at a particular point in time. That's all information that you know. I know that if you know you, you're moving to a platform and you're not retaining your history the likelihood is that you'd have to go back through your paper manual files and folders or do com comprehensive ASIC searches to be able to reconstruct a history, which can be so, so time consuming. Absolutely. And if you're ever, you know, in a situation where that data, that information needs to be provided to the court, um, yep. that information you would, you know, the last thing we want is to sell you a, a fantastic new product with, that doesn't bring across any of your history, where anything that's happened in the past, you need to spend hours if not days reconstructing so um, we wanted to this was really a big part of that migration was making sure that we were able to preserve that data for you yes absolutely all right so we'll move on to the next slide which is all about how the cas to cas 360 migration works well the first point and we have already touched on this is bgl completes this for you it is a case that we take over the migration and we complete it for you so it's not a case that you have to sit there and migrate company by company and check it. We do it for you. All that you need to do is simply provide BGL with your CASWIN folder and we will do the rest. So all of your documents are in that folder. All of your company data, every single transaction in CAS desktop is inside that folder and you send it through to us and that's what we migrate. We migrate every single bit of data that you have in your CAS desktop 
every single document that you have in your CAS desktop straight into CAS 360. Um, that's what we do. And we get we do that because we have all of the data. And the third point there, it's free. We don't charge for this. There's no uh, you know, additional fee or anything like that. It's free. So it's completed for you. It is complete with all of your company data, all of your historical data, all of your company documents, and it's free. They're the three key points I want to take away, you to take away from, from this particular slide. Um, once you've completed your cleanup, book a migration time, and then depending on the size of your data, maybe one to three days before you can start using CAS 360. So that's it. It's very, very simple. Yeah, Warren, just when it comes to, you know, like the whole migration and, and the whole process, um, I know you're going to talk a little bit about cleaning up the data, right? Um, what, what are some of the things you're looking at here? Because I think it's important that clients know that, you know, in CAS 360, and I've seen, sorry, in CAS desktop, I've seen this happen so, so many times, where people will have multiple instances of a director or a shareholder. Are you suggesting that we clean all that up before we move across? Um, so look at the, the, the point I'll make is whatever you have in your CAS desktop, we will migrate. There is, some, there is some magic that we do and I touch on that when it comes to contacts and things like that. There are two types of, I suppose, duplicates. There's duplicates where you have data that um, basically is on the ASIC register and can't change. And this is, you know, most commonly a, a person that will have um, their middle name in some instances and no middle name in other instances. In those cases, you actually will migrate both. You'll migrate both because the alternative is to lodge 492s to ASIC and actually correct the data to make them all consistent across the board. So in those instances, uh, I guess the damage has already been done. Um, and to undo it, you'll need to lodge forms with ASIC. There's, there's no way around it. Um, maybe, maybe in 2023, uh, there might be some cleanup that ASIC do at their side that, that might help. Now, the other dupe type of duplicate is um, where there's an exact match. So say, for example, you've got a person, they've got the exact same name, the exact same address, the exact same um, date of birth, the exact same place of birth. And for some weird reason, they're in your system nine times the migration will actually fix that for you. So where there is an exact match, the migration will actually clean that up for you. Yeah. So there, in terms of um, what, when we talk about cleaning up the data here, um, I, we're really looking at, you know, the information that you want migrated versus the information you don't want migrated. Obviously, if you don't want particular information migrated, then obviously don't provide it. So that's the, the next slide here is, is what should I do pre-migration? And we talk about cleaning your data and, and, and this is really focused on everything that you provide will be migrated. So if you've got, for example, um, a client group that's left your practice, um, what do you want to do with that data? Do you want it migrated or do you not want it migrated? Um, these are the decisions that we need to make because once you send us that CAS data folder, CAS win folder, we'll migrate it. And those companies will appear in your CAS 360. So you know, this is where we really need to make sure that we're removing those unwanted companies and trusts, those entities that we that we no longer need. Um, maybe there might be a hard cutoff, maybe, you know, three years ago, if the company left you more than three years ago, you don't want to migrate that. But that's really the what we're looking for here in terms of, of cleaning up the data. Um, and also, if you, if you know you've got some some transactions in there that need to be deleted. Maybe you've got a, a few share transactions that you put in for a client and the client has advised you that those transactions aren't going ahead. Those sorts of things, it's always best to clean up before you migrate rather than you know, leaving it for CAS 360 to clear that sort of uh, those sorts of things out. But more or less, we're not telling you to go through and you know redo every contact and, and change every bit of information. You don't need to do that. It's more about being being confident and being sure with what you're migrating and what you want inside CAS 360 at the end of the day. Yep. Um, look, I, I suppose another thing, Warren, that we that we want to touch on, and I, I think you'll get to this a little bit later on, is around the training and how we should prepare ourselves insofar as learning CAS 360 before we make the step across. Now, one of the things that I am really pleased to say, and Warren, we'll continue with this in a sec, is that a lot of the processes and functionality within CAS 360 are not too dissimilar to CAS desktop. 
So the, the feedback that we get is the actual process of migrating data is really simple, but then also modifying and moving across to CAS 360 from CAS desktop is not as difficult as people may think, because as I said before, a lot of the processes and workflows are maintained and, yep. you, and the outcomes and the, the outputs are very similar. What does change a little bit is the delivery of the documents and what does change is things like digital signing, but all those packs that you generated in the past, all the supporting documentations, the letters, the cover letters, resolutions, minutes, et cetera, then the end result of the changes you process, which are very similar to CAS desktop, result in the same outcome, don't know why. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it goes a long way. I mean, we weren't, um, we weren't trying to change some of the key concepts of what CAS did. Um, if anything, we were just trying to modernize. Um, yeah. CAS desktop has been a very successful product for a very long time. Um, so we weren't coming here to completely you know, rip it up. What we wanted to do was um, preserve a lot of those key concepts, you know, the concept of the comparison report, which you know, everyone uses every single day. Um, that same concept is in CAS 360. It's just automated. So the whole concept is still there. The concept of making a change, preparing the document pack, you know, the concept of things like print toggles and things like that, they are all in CAS 360. Um, we've tried to keep so many key concepts of CAS desktop in CAS 360 um, because the, at the end of the day, CAS 360 produced the right result. Or CAS desktop, sorry, produced the right result. So CAS 360's focus was to produce the right result, but quicker. And that's what we've really focused on. Um, a couple of other things that you should do pre-migration, which is just really just good business. Um, make sure you're checking any client deadlines uh, and annual reviews around that migration period or that migration week. So be really clear on that. And also um, to not lodge any documents in CAS desktop after the data has been provided to BGL. So once you provide BGL with that CASWIN folder, um, it's best to uh, not log into CAS desktop or not certainly not do any lodgements during that time, purely because once you've provided us with the data, um, that's the data we're going to migrate. So anything that is done to the database or any lodgements that are done post giving us that data, it obviously won't be reflected in your CAS 360 yeah. software when you log in. So a good idea for those listening, if you've got um, documents that are due within the next three or four days, um, prior to sending us the data, probably I would recommend getting yourself to a point where you get those lodged and then hand across your CASWIN folder. So when it comes to us migrating it across, what's left on there is things, for example, that may have more than seven days remaining before the deadline expires. So it just gives you a little bit of space to make sure that you meet your compliance requirements. Now, of course, the moment that, um, that you send the data off uh, to BGL, you'll get an urgent phone call from one of your clients demanding that a 484 is lodged in the next 20 minutes. Um, the, the only thing I, I say to that is obviously, when it's urgent and you have to facilitate it, you have to you have to lodge it. Um, just really be aware that um, that obviously you want to reduce that and, and try that yep. try to have that not happen. But if it does happen, you just need to um, essentially re-add the change in CAS three hundred and sixty once the migration is complete. Correct. So talk a little bit about the migration magic, and you know we've spent a lot of time building the migration product, um, and it really is an ongoing project. Every time we add new features to CAS 360, we actually have to adjust and innovate with the, the, um, the migration process. Um, I've touched on the migration of automatically merging identical duplicates. That's, that's one thing that, you know, we, what we wanted to do is actually reduce the data that we're bringing across by utilizing some of our matching algorithms and uh, deduplicating uh, essentially um, when, when, uh, when you have those identical contacts. So CAS3, the migration to CAS360 will take care of that. Also, all of your company and trust history is migrated. So we have made a big point of this, but it's, it's very important. Um, if you've got a company that's from the 70s or 60s, all of that data is migrated across. Nothing is lost. Um, every single share transaction, every single officer appointment, every single document prepared for those companies and trusts will be migrated. Whatever you have in CAS desktop will be migrated. Um, and then the documents. Every single document that you have in CAS desktop is migrated. We've gone to even the, the key details, things like 
trace numbers. Your trace numbers that you have in CAS desktop are transferred across and they are the trace numbers you have in CAS 360. And the very first document you prepare in CAS 360 will continue along that trace number. So if you're up to 1053, the next, the docu first document you produce in CAS 360 will be 1054. So we continue to keep those little details like your trace number, they, they all come, they all get migrated and you continue to continue on that particular process. Also, your unlodged ASIC forms are migrated and can be lodged in CAS 360. So if you've got forms that you've prepared in CAS desktop, okay, and they need to be lodged in a few days time, you go through the migration, you click lodge in CAS 360 and it will all work. So we've gone to the effort of making sure that your um, electronic lodgement files are brought across and you are able to preserve those files. It's not a case of having to redo them. You don't have to redo that work. We migrate everything, even your unlodged ASIC forms. So you go through the migration and you can click lodge in CAS 360. So prepared in CAS desktop, lodged in CAS 360 is possible. And also all of your unprocessed annual reviews will be ready to process in CAS 360. So there's no escaping them. Um, if you have, uh, have got 35 unprocessed annual reviews in CAS desktop, uh, when you go through that migration process, they'll all be sitting there waiting for you to process in CAS 360. Again, there's no extra work that you need to do for this. We will migrate it across and they'll be ready to go. Um, and you get to use the automatic features in CAS 360, I guess. And they'll be easier to process, won't they, Warren? Well, absolutely. I mean, you've got the ability to you'll have the automated comparison report that will be sitting there waiting for you. So you won't even need to wait for those comparison reports to load. They'll be the result will be sitting there and you'll be able to uh, email deliver them off straight away. So the migration, um, whilst we talk a lot about you know migrating your company history and all of that data, there's some little features like the trace number, like the um, unlodged forms, like the annual reviews that we are focused on to make sure that the experience is as seamless as possible for your practice. I'll move on now to your first month on CAS 360. And this is really what we want you focusing on for that first month. You, you've gone through the process of migrating. You're now on a brand new system, okay? And there are huge amounts of resources available to you. Um, one of the, I suppose, the advantages of migrating in 2021 is that We've already migrated over a thousand firms from CAS desktop to CAS 360. So it is a tried and proven process. Uh, and you are uh, essentially getting a, a process that's been ran a thousand times before. Um, so you can have a lot of confidence in it. Now, when you are uh, using CAS 360, first thing we get you to do, run through the training manual or the learning channel course. Both of these are free. They are available to you. They are self-paced learning through the learning channel. Obviously the training manual is there. And obviously we've got a heap of do help documentation as well. So a lot of resources there to get you started, but it would be ideal to go through the training manual or the learning channel just to get a, a feel of the CAS 360 features. Yeah, and um, look, within the first month, definitely go through that. But I also recommend that, you know, if you are going through the process of, you know, sending us your data for us to migrate it, those few days that you may have a little bit of downtime is also a really good window to do some training and um, make sure that during that process of going through the course or whatever it may be, that you do ask the account managers or your account manager for any help and or assistance or instructions or clarity on things, they'll be more than happy to help you. So in that, I, I see that as a good little opportunity to go through this and get your people onto it. It is free of charge and it's actually very, very good content. And we'll make sure that once you open up CAS 360 for the first time and going forward, that you're pretty much up and ready to go rather than it being a brand new product. You'll have some familiarity with it. Absolutely. And then um, have, a, have a, a watch of some of the new feature webinars that we do on YouTube. Um, we now have a, a catalog of fantastic YouTube webinars that we've done over the last uh, three or four years, where every time we release a new feature, we cover it in a new feature webinar. Um, we have a, a CAS 360 community, which has all of our webinars linked. And you are able to go and watch this in your own time um, watch how to use some of these new features and, um, and really get the most out of your CAS 360. Uh, we also run these webinars quite regularly as well. So you once, once you're using the system, you'll have a little notification that will pop up on your screen um, telling you that a webinar is, is, is starting soon and you'll be able to, uh, to register and join. 
Yeah, and um, just with the new features webinars, Warren, they are all free. And it's our way of giving back to you and our way of making sure that you are on top of the changes and hopefully giving you more and more exposure and familiarity to the many great features and functions in CAS 360, which will obviously help you increase its adoption rates, which will also make our developers very happy. Exactly. And we also have a little bit of fun in the webinars as well. We try to make them not, uh, not standard boring webinars. We try and have a bit of a laugh and, and have a bit of fun as well in those sessions. Um, the other things to get started on, setting up your email templates. One of the big differences of moving from CAS desktop to CAS 360 is that CAS 360 can send all your emails. Um, so all of your communication to your client is through CAS 360. Um, CAS 360 sends a ridiculous amount of emails every week, over 30,000. Um, and this is all document communication, annual review communication, now director ID communication. All of these email templates you have complete control over. You can customize them, put your branding, your logos, your font, everything you want in them. Um, but it's always, I mean, we've, we've delivered a, a baseline template, which are all really, really good, um, but they might not be as personalized as you'd like them. So have a look at the email templates and go through and you can customize all of them. Um, it really will help you, you and your firm stand out. Um, the next is obviously setting up the document templates and in particular things like annual review letters. One of the big time savings that CAS 360 can offer for you is the creation of the document pack and not having to go out to a product like Microsoft Word to create a cover letter every time. So in CAS 360, all of our document templates are actually Microsoft Word templates. So this is your letters and things like that, but also your minutes, resolutions, your registers. So you have complete control over those and you can customize those uh, uh, however you want them to look. Um, the next one is getting your email addresses and your phone numbers added to the system. So um, what we have got is a Excel import where you can put your email addresses for your clients and your phone numbers in. Obviously to email your clients, you need their email address. You can actually add them as you go, but we also have a bulk import process. Um, if you are connecting your CAS 360 to something like a zero practice manager, for example, uh, your email addresses will automatically come across. But obviously it's good to have a strategy of how you're going to get those email addresses. Uh, I say mobile phone numbers because you're able to send SMSs out of CAS 360 as well. Well, and the other thing too also is um, just a little bit on trusts. Um, I know that many clients, and it actually astounds me as to how many do this, but many clients are managing trusts outside of CAS desktop and even in CAS 360. Um, and one of the things that we can do, and I mean, obviously it's included in CAS 360, is the ability to manage trusts and you know multiple different types of trusts. But then we also have a, a, a nice little import routine which will allow us to bring the trusts, particular trust data in, which will save you from having to type a lot of that in manually. Warren, do you want to just touch on that briefly? Because I think that's an important point too and may encourage people to bring their trusts in. Yeah, so trust management in CAS 360 is obviously free. And we have some fantastic features for your trust management. You know, all of the uh, ability to change every relationship. So your trustees and things like that is all in CAS 360. Obviously your unit holders and your unit transactions in CAS 360 for your unit trusts, for your discretionary trusts, you've got, you know, features uh, like storing the beneficiaries, but also doing your distribution statements. Um, so you can do your distribution minutes and your distribution resolutions. And we have, I think it's 28 income tax types that you can put in and you can do a, a percentage distribution, a free tax distribution, a, a monetary distribution. So you've got a huge amount of, um, I suppose, features and functions when it comes to doing your trust distributions. Um, and if you're doing your trust distributions via Microsoft Word, I think you should have a look at CAS 360 because uh, it'll make it a lot, lot simpler. Um, and then we've also got features like trust events where you're able to put in all the assets of a trust and uh, all of the um, items that happen or transactions that happen in a trust's life, you're able to put them into the system and prepare all your documents for them as well. So just a huge amount of functionality that really um, doesn't really exist elsewhere. Absolutely. Um, also, uh, the next point here is setting CAS 360 up for company and corporations. So CAS 360 can lodge company and corporations with ASIC. All you need is a direct debit account with ASIC through your agent account and you can start lodging Form 201s and there's no markup. You actually only pay the ASIC fee for those particular company in corps and 
Coming soon in 2022, you'll be able to purchase a constitution at the click of a button from a number of different providers, which is uh, really exciting. Um, and speaking of providers, um, you're able to connect CAS360 to all of your apps within your firm. Again, a, a big difference between CAS360 and CAS Desktop is that it's web-based and it's able to be connected to your applications. So digital signing is, is a huge one. Um, we have so many practices that are connected CAS360 to either DocuSign, Adobe Sign, or Fuse Sign, um, because those signing integrations are built into CAS360. So you're able to connect that and start utilizing the, the, the features and the efficiencies straight away. Your legal documents, so you know, things like Access, uh, Clear Docs, Lightyear Docs, we've got a, a number, Smarter SMSF, a number of uh, legal documents, the uh, providers that are integrated in CAS 360 and will allow you to share data between those applications. Obviously your document management. So here we've got FYI docs, we've got virtual cabinet, we've got suite files coming soon, where you're going to be able, where you are able to share those documents between CAS 360 and those document management apps. Um, and we've just released some great um, APIs that will allow those applications to get the documents in real time. So you'll be able to prepare your documents in CAS 360 and have them automatically appear in FYI, for example, which is really, really nice. And then as I've mentioned before, practice management. So you're able to connect your CAS 360 to your practice management application um, and share data both ways. So it is a, a two-way integration um, some really powerful features with our practice management integration that will save you time, but also ensure consistency across your practice data, which is uh, really important. And lastly, uh, integration with Simple Fund 360 and Simple Invest 360. So we've got a great contact integration there as well, really so that you can have a, a unified contact list across your practice management software, your Simple Fund 360, your CAS 360, and beyond. So a huge amount of uh, integration features there as well. Absolutely. And um, you covered that very well, Warren, and um, I'm sure it provides lots and lots of direction. But yeah, touching on that point of you know, the trusts and everything that we do to be able to help you across, you know, one of the mandates that we have is to really eliminate any points of friction and or concern Right, and you can have confidence in the process. And the next slide is, I suppose, I'd like to maybe finish on this together with Warren, which is why you can take confidence in the process. Um, these are just some of the CAS, or these are most of the CAS 360 team members. Um, we know that for a long time, you the, the, the CAS desktop clients have been using, you know, you've been using our products for a long time. And we are so grateful for the belief and the trust that you've had in us for such a long time. And we don't take any of that for granted. And I know that there are some people on here that are, you know, 20, 25, maybe even early 90s clients, which is just phenomenal. Um, but, you know, the reason you really connect with us is, yes, we do compliance and we make compliance easy, but the, the bigger picture and the bigger question is, you know, why do you connect with us? And really, we'd like you to, but we'd like to believe that the reason you do that is because of the people that we have. Um, we have an incredible group of people who are absolutely committed to making sure that not only you get the best software in your hands, but you get the greatest value and you get the greatest um, level of satisfaction and or experience that one could ask for. Are we perfect? Absolutely not. But are we committed to making sure that we bring a smile to your face? Absolutely. And I can assure you that our culture and our people that are behind CAS360 and our other products are absolutely a cut above the rest. And um, in my role, um, I couldn't be any more proud of these people. And I know that the people that have got us to where we are today, you can have the confidence in them to take us forward and take you where you need to be. And I said, these are a group of stars that we're just so, so proud of. And, um, you know, I just know that with them behind the products, you're in absolutely fantastic hands and you've got nothing to fear. So, Warren, I'm, I'm just going to just, I know, that, I know that you want to finish off because I, I always like to have, make you have the last word, but there is um, a poll that we're going to run. Um, yes. If you'd like to know more or you would like to find out a bit more information about CAS Desktop or moving across, please do get in touch with us. Even if it's just a conversation, we would be delighted to hear from you, right? No pressure, no nothing. And as we've said from the beginning, there is no forcing at this point. Um, we haven't announced the end date. Um, we know that there are some timelines with the ATO, which we are looking at um, 
you know, sort of at the end of, or middle of, sort of towards the end of 2023, while we can support CAS desktop, we will continue to do so. But the, at some point in the future, we won't be able to do so. And um, by then we hope you're tr well and truly migrated and happy. So that would be the ideal for us. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you for your kind words, Daniel. I mean, this is a, a photo of the CAS360 product team and we've got 22 people um, in our product team. And um, yeah, this is the, the, the team that, that builds the product. Um, to give you some context, um, I used to, a long time ago, Daniel, I used to run the CAS desktop product and I think we had a team of five at our largest. So um, certainly from BGL's perspective, we have invested heavily in our CAS360 product and you know, having 22 staff members is a, is a, a big investment, um, but, um, you know, we're, we're committed to building a, a fantastic product and uh, these are the guys that do it. But enough about uh, the CAS360 product. I wanted to know if there were any questions. If you do have any questions, please type them in the chat or in the Q&A um, and Daniel and I will, uh, will do our best to answer those questions. I'd just like to wish everyone a, a, a happy Christmas and New Year. Um, hopefully, you all have a safe, uh, a safe holiday and a safe break and get a good break in. Um, and uh, we look forward to seeing you all again in 2022. Fantastic. But, uh, Thank bye. you, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank bye. you, Warren. Cheers. Bye. Appreciate it. Bye-bye.